It took David Marr six years to write Patrick White's official biography. Showing the manuscript to the crotchy old author was probably the most difficult moment. It would be if the book says things like that about him. Good evening. Some more silly stuff. First from the Hobart Mercury, a disarming ad for a real estate agent. John has lied in the Huon all his life. In Monday's Courier Mail, we had the news that... The US government forfeited assets worth $460 million from convicted criminals. Yes, but who to? And, same edition, a picture of the super tanker which in 1970... Struck an unchartered rock pinnacle in the Torres Strait. It's the trouble with rocks, you can never charter one when you need it. And last, from Wednesday's Herald Sun... Joe Bailey found a lovely bunch of melons at Paran Market. Amusing, but highly derivative of Donald McGill's That's Four Nice Melons You've Got There, Misses. Turning to more important matters. Four Corners tonight shows where the media and aids are positioned, with an internal gulf between that kind of humanised explanation through a role model of great significance, non-judgmental and empathetic, and the maintenance of the shock horror stuff calculated only to sustain fear and prejudice. One of her abductors had said he was infected by AIDS. The troubles of Charlene, a plague on our town. AIDS agony, jabbed warder tests positive. When Stuart Challender called his press conference and the burst of positive writing about his disease began, the irony was that it was the fear of irresponsible and sensational journalism that forced his hand. There was a catalyst, of course, and that was with a certain Sunday paper, Melbourne Sunday paper, and one that has since folded, <laughs> uh, were threatening to uh, write an article about how AIDS was devastating the musical life of Sydney, and they were going to name my name. We like to think we've learned and outgrown the sort of headlines that first broke the news of AIDS. Killer disease hits US gays. Hospital asked to study homosexual disease. Heterosexual gay plague victims alarm doctors. Probably fewer than 20 men in New South Wales are suffering from the mystery disease AIDS. But large sections of the community have been seized by an epidemic of fear. Hospital worker dies from AIDS. Gay in the face of a tragedy. Those cuttings are eight years old. Today, 16,000 Australians are known to be HIV positive and 1,650 people have died of AIDS. But our mass media seem to be getting sick of the story. The Courier Mail last April reported that nine Queenslanders died of AIDS in February. Way back on page 11, echoes of the Grim Reaper and all. And the Australians report that by 1994, 10 million Africans and 3 million Asians are expected to have the virus. Rated considerably less space last month than a fairly serious injury to a racehorse. Even the apocalyptic struggles to be noticed. Some estimates say one third of Uganda's people of child producing age may be infected with the virus. HIV epidemic sweeping Asia. AIDS likely to orphan millions. And despite 10 years of media coverage, the Australian reported last month that American... Polls show the public clinging to a view of AIDS as a ghetto disease, restricted largely to homosexual men, drug users and prostitutes. It's not hard to see why. The Nine Network's 60 Minutes, when it deals with AIDS, treats it as an affliction of the contemptible. Remember Charlene? Did you tell that man he could get AIDS? I said, don't come near me, leave me alone. I don't want you near me at all. I have AIDS and I don't want you to touch me. You won't feel guilty if he has AIDS? No. And 60 Minutes with typical moderate preamble. There's a time bomb ticking away in Asia. A time bomb which is just about to explode. Exploits AIDS in Thailand as a sex horror story. The ghoulie bars, brothels and glitzy massage parlours of Bangkok. Ideal incubators for the AIDS virus. And there's a breathtaking shamelessness in the tabloid's treatment of child victims. And they never let go. Eve van Grafhorst, six years ago. First picture, little Eve. 
banned from a play centre. She was taken to New Zealand, but it wasn't far enough. Six years down the track, we catch up with Eve in New Zealand. If I get too sick, I'll probably... That mm, won't be, be the end of me. And I'm just thinking of my friends and thinking of myself. Much of the focus of the stories on child AIDS victims is concentrated on compensation or the lack of it. Dying AIDS girls' lawyers admit no case. Our ordeal, AIDS boys' parents. In which the state government was attacked for... Ignoring the plight of innocent AIDS victims. That concept of innocence, which is said to attach to those with medically acquired HIV, while surely meaningless, carries a correlative of homosexuals and drug users getting no more than they deserve. And media performance is doing little or nothing to remove that distinction. Lorraine Siblick has watched more than 25 AIDS sufferers die. She's seen the pain, wiped away the tears, but most of all, she'd been waging a campaign for all those innocently infected through hospital blood products in the early 80s. I suppose the question is whether, on issues such as AIDS, journalists have a duty to maintain and shape public awareness, or whether their job is simply to report. If the latter, there's less of it at least in the estimation of Professor Ron Penny, quoted thus in The Weekend Australian a week ago. There has already been a loss of public interest and concern. AIDS only gets into the public agenda now when it is horrific or earth-shattering. Professor Penny is our guest this week. The sensible, balanced messages about AIDS prevention uh, are generally not of interest. There's been a general level of um, fatigue to the existing safe sexual messages. So the media response has been to look for the more dramatic in the AIDS area as being newsworthy rather than reinforcement of solid sensible messages. Against that, there are the worthy efforts of the Couchman program taking on the problem of media and therefore community apathy. The, the discrimination that happens, they sort of go, you're gay, well, you deserve it. In the same couchman, a rebuttal of the guilty innocent analysis. I don't think it matters. If you've got this virus, you've got it, you learn to live with it. It doesn't matter how you got it. And it leads into that whole thing. They're, you know, medically acquired, are quite innocent, and we're guilty, and I won't wear that. But even in tonight's Four Corners, the most eloquent demonstration of the conditioning of the AIDS victim to the still existing judgment of the community. But I never denied it to myself. And then after a while, I started confessing it to friends. But uh, it wasn't always easy. Some friends were easier to confess to than others. Why do you use the word confess? Well, that's what I felt it was. If ever the media had a responsibility to lead public attitudes, this has to be it. A contrast on that, an enlightened editorial from the Hobart Mercury. Now, children and heterosexual men and women in their thousands have been infected. Once, members of this group were known as the innocent victims of AIDS. Such a tag implied that others affected by the disease were guilty, as though they deliberately caught AIDS and passed it on to others. That in the course of the debate about homosexual law reform in Tasmania. And, on the other hand, the Australian's editorial last Thursday condemned the stance on compensation of the AIDS Council of New South Wales, which... ...insists that no distinction can be made when offering compensation between those who contract AIDS through someone else's mistake while in hospital and those who are infected during the course of consenting sexual activity. Well, here too, media attitudes won't help prevent the self-interested separation of wholly meaningless classes of HIV sufferers. The first case in Australia, and perhaps the first in the world, in which the Red Cross had paid damages to a victim of medically acquired AIDS. She slammed the legal system, saying it added to the stress medically acquired AIDS sufferers were under. That story hasn't moved one inch in seven years. This cutting's from September 1984. Compensation for unwitting AIDS victims urged. And there's a depressing similarity on another level with those sensational discoveries of miracle cancer cures eight years ago. US may have found cure for AIDS. Four years ago. Turbocharged vaccine could hold AIDS cure. 
vaccine hailed as hope against AIDS. Dutch claim AIDS drug breakthrough. And last year? Morton Bay chestnut causes excitement among scientists. And 1991. At last, an AIDS vaccine? Media has been exploited by scientists in terms of the so-called discoveries or breakthrough. And I think if we look from again from 1981 to the present uh, and look at headlines over the decade, uh, it's what cancer used to be like 20 years ago. Major breakthrough, a new drug. The people working in the area know that it's a bit like going to a restaurant and looking at what's the plate of the day. When you look at the plate of the day, it's here today, gone tomorrow. And unfortunately, that's happened in the 60s with the so-called miracle cancer cures, and it's happening in the 80s and 90s with the so-called miracle drug uh, AIDS cures. And I think that serious people are aware that a lot of exploitation uh, has been done, particularly in the so-called breakthroughs, and unfortunately also in the area of individual and personal promotion. Experts who aren't experts, cures that aren't cures, medical acquisition, classification of sufferers into the deserving and undeserving, they're really journalists' creations in an area where the public interest demands something more constructive than obviously well-intentioned but entirely static pieces like this one from the Sunday Herald Sun a week ago. Sufferers are described first in terms of how they became HIV positive. Homosexual men who had contracted hepatitis, a relationship with a man who admitted to a bisexual history. And it's only the haemophiliac victims about whom it's reported that... AIDS has created new problems with the escalating cost of care. Parents now have to pay for home treatment costs. Yesterday in the Sun Herald, the compensation debate. I've yet to see a journalist point out that nobody advocates denying treatment entitlement to lung cancer sufferers or footballers, least of all on some imputation of guilt. It's no more than a lack of commitment, I suppose, comparable with the easy way of creating conflict, a technique wholly inappropriate in these circumstances. You know what I mean. Maybe the ads uh, could be in a, a hidden message, could be to show homosexual behaviour as acceptable, providing you use condoms. And they all do it. I'd like to know more about the uh, circumstances, because I see two types of people. Those I see. You'd like to know person. how he caught it? Whether it was a, as an innocent person, say through a blood transfusion, or whether uh -huh. through his own actions. You can't blame Fred. He's only a politician after all. It's the media people who invite them on who are mismanaging the debate. It was the same thing in Tasmania. And once you open the door here in Tasmania, what will happen then is that the big boys will take over. And then uh, we've already had an indication from the local leader of the homosexuals uh, who has said that they would need then to be talking to educators um, and talking about adding it to school curriculum. It's journalists, after all, who bear the responsibility for this sort of stuff. Deviants put kids at risk. Gay group suggests sex venue solution. Sex toilet car seen at creche. And inviting innocent school kids to mix with these deviants under the guise of AIDS education. Depressing, isn't it? My argument's this. Journalists aren't mere chroniclers of AIDS casualties, and they may not claim people have lost interest in the story. The research shows that ignorance and prejudice remain, which is a matter for them, not the scientists. Good night.